Greetings, this is uh, Brian Fields, Amateur Radio Call Sign, W9CR. I have a little demo I'm going to be showing here of a uh, application um, we have to work with the uh, the Weris radios. That's these uh, these guys right here. Let's see if I can get a... There we go. The Weris radio. The uh, HT uh, 1250, 750, and the um, 1550, also the CDM versions. Um, they have a number of these that are, uh, and of course, is aftermarket case and aftermarket battery, aftermarket everything. Um, they have a number of these that are known as the Pro Radios uh, that are used for export. Um, they also have quite a few that are uh, for. Uh, 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 what's it called a uh, passport trunking they have MPT trunking as well uh, there's some other use in the UK of certain ones I'm, I'm not exactly certain on those I've never seen those but um, this is something we developed to make them easier to take out a band uh, so one of the problems we have with these radios is that you can move them out of band pretty easily it's a, I'll, I'll show that in a second and I've shown a video on that to do it via hex editing um, the problem is you have to move what are called the tuning piers, and um, I'll show you a little bit on what the tuning piers do here. But uh, essentially, what they do is is make whatever frequency you're on perfectly in tune, or as close to perfectly in tune as you can get linear. You know, uh, it's a non-linear response, so they'll they'll measure it out across the band that you're on. Um, so the problem is if you don't change those, this affects things like PL deviation and whatnot, and uh, you know, you'll change your band edges, but then it won't have a proper calibration point at your new band edges. You'll kind of be screwed. Um, it just won't work well. So, what I've done is uh, figure out a way to do this in with a hex editor. Been working with a, a few friends here that uh, are much more talented coders than I am. I, I wrote up a little script in Python to be able to do some analysis on it. They took it and really, really improved upon it. So um, with that, let me, uh, let, me, let me show you what we have here. And we are looking for a couple beta testers, people that can test this against other Wera series Motorola radios that are not the HT12, you know, different ones. Low band, uh, low band's important as well because you have a 42 to 50 megahertz radio. If you take that radio up to about 51 megahertz, it won't work properly unless you mess with the tuning points. Once you mess with the tuning points, you're good to go. Uh, you're going to do a realignment, but that's really about it. UHF, the UHF Range 2 ones are very, very cheap right now, and they're hard locked to 450 though. So you can uh, you can take that radio and move it so it covers down to 440. From what I've seen, the VCO always locks. The tuning points, you really don't even have to work with it. Uh, it just works. Uh, there's no retuning needed on those. Uh, of course, the low band one you need to retune. But th that one, no, uh, it works just fine. So let me show you some of this and some of the program that we have here, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. I, I am very interested to, to hear some feedback from people uh, using it, and you know, if you want to beta test it, keep in mind it might break your radio. Um, but I haven't had it break one, and you, know, you can back up the radio so that if you do get it invalid, you can uh, restore the radio to its previous state. So. I'll show you how it works here with a, uh, a CDM uh, 1250 uh, UHF Rev2 and some of the cool things you can do with it. So I'd like to show a little of how this uh, works. Um, basically what I have here is uh, 450, so here's your 450 band edge and 520 and you'll see you have a whole bunch of tuning points in here. So there's a tuning point, there's a tuning point, 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 point. There's seven of them. Um, and it'll typically be offset about 25 kilohertz from the actual band edge. Uh, that really doesn't matter, but what it does is it does a calculation between that band edge and that far tuning point and that tuning point. Y equals MX plus B. It knows that, you know, this is 42 there and that's 52. Well then, you know, that's going to be in the middle. That's going uh, to be 45 or 46 right there when you're on, you know, 455 megahertz. So, so long as these band edges and all this stuff line up, you get a nice interpolated slope here and the radio can calculate it out. So your deviation and everything will be essentially adjusted a little bit for every frequency so that it's got the same response, everything's nice and perfect. This is why 
commercial radios are so much different than amateur radios in that they, um, they, they work like this. Uh, they have tuning points not just set once on the band or a limiter. The limiter is adjusted every single tuning point here. Your power output is adjusted every, every point, and it's got a feedback loop to control this. So it knows that stuff's going to be nonlinear, and it measures it, and then is able to calculate it out. So let me show you what happens here when you just move the band edge using the uh, hex editing. So say you move the band edge down to 440 here. Okay, there's my new band edge, but you see I have no more tuning points in here. So what happens is, you go to 445, you're below your low tuning point here, and it has no idea what that should be, because it knows what's up here, or if it goes down, it's going to be an invalid number in the CPU. So this y equals mx plus b formula is you know, going to result in divide by zero errors, all kinds of problems. So you're not going to have a good response. So consequently, you go down here without adjusting any of this, your PL deviation, your transmit deviation, all this stuff is going to be way off. So that's why it's important to get this correct. And uh, I'll show you how this works here in a second. Um, it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, little application that uh, was written as part of uh, Chirp, the radio programming software. And uh, I'm, 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 I haven't had it brick a radio yet, which is kind of cool. Uh, but it does allow you to do some stuff that will definitely uh, make your radio come up with a you know CS error and tell you you need to reload a code plug. Okay, so you can see what we have set up here is a uh, CDM uh, 1550 or 1250, excuse me. And this is actually a test radio we have. It is programmed up for uh, 450 to uh, 520, excuse me, by default. And uh, it's just an analog only, uh, doesn't do any trunking, nothing like that. And so what I'm going to pull in here, and first and foremost, let me show you this um, model. Um, if I scroll down here, you can see these are all the different default code plugs that are out there, and uh, what they're for, and every possible model. So this is a uh, uh, 450 to 521. And uh, you know, here's basically what it is. And you can see there's your base frequency, there's your low and your high. And so you have here in your pink, this is uh, the receive side. And then you have your transmit side over here. And you can see these go all the way from 450 to 520. And the other thing we found in here, and this is a script that I wrote in, in Python. Uh, to be able to pull all this stuff out and put it in a spreadsheet, um, was this here, which was 450 and 450.050. All oh, these are the test frequencies. I couldn't figure out what these were for a while. These are the individual test frequencies that are in there. And uh, we, we've made that so you can change them as well, and change your squelch pots and things like that. But I would suggest that you use the... Um, uh, you, you definitely want to use the uh, uh, tuner. To set this stuff up, not the squelch pots. So you know, you can do it, but only if you really, really have to. It's it's a way to mess with it. Tuner is much nicer because you put it in there. You put your negative 126 dBm signal in and, and align it for that for your squelch. So that's the tuning peers. Let me um, show chirp. So I'm going to open up chirp here. I'm using the daily build. Okay, first of all, make certain you have enabled developer functions turned on under help. File, load module, and this whereas.py module. Open this thing up, and then first thing you want to do is download from radio. It's going to give you Motorola, and then you want to do WARUS tuning. Click OK. Boom, it's going to read it. Now ignore this part here, because this is this will actually populate if you have stuff in here, if you do a full like HT1250 read with it. 
But right now we're only going to be reading the tuning information, which is under the settings. So you see your tuning, your peers, all this stuff here, and your feature data. It's all there. So before you change anything, save this so you have it. That way, if you need to restore it, if something breaks, you can do so. So, go into tuning, or tuning peers, and you're going to see a bug here, which is that the cursor does not appear to show up, uh, but it's there. And just subtract 10 megahertz from everyone. It would be really cool if we had a button, you could just go and say, hey, subtract 10 megahertz, but, you know, it's, this is significantly easier than... Uh, editing it by hand. And since we're going from 440 to 510, that's how that is. I don't mess with the RF test channels at all. Um, squelch attenuation's already been set up. I don't need to mess with that. But you do see, even in originally from 450 to 519, they're all set up pretty much the same. So it's not a huge, huge difference here. Um, I'm going to change this, and again, you'll see it doesn't have the cursor in there, and you've got to make certain this is exactly 10 characters. So, W9CR underscore BRYAM. Exactly 10 characters. Um, change my code plug to say it's from the factory. And then I'm going to change my lower limit to 440 to 510 megahertz. North America. And here's where you can enable your trunking bits, so, or your signaling bits. So I enable everything, which would be an FF, but the upper nibble of that byte are bits to control trunking, and the lower are for signaling on conventional. So I'm not exactly certain what all the difference of these are, but you enable them all, you get MDC, uh, DTMF, and uh, Quick Call 2. And the final thing I'm going to do is change this to 255, which is also FF, which will give me 255 conventional channels in this. So let's take a quick look at everything here. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Go back here. I'm happy with my serial number. I can always just update that if I want to in the future. Everything looks good. Don't change the base frequency here. This will really mess, mess your day up. Um, okay, so I'm going to do radio. Upload to radio. And you're going to see these guys go nuts here as soon as it starts uploading. It's going to already have selected where I was tuning. Click OK. There you go. It's going to reboot. Now, if I do radio, download from radio. OK. It's going to show that the settings have taken effect. As you can see right there, your rated volume has changed. Test channels are still the same, but your tuning peers are all now set properly. Feature data looks good. So let's uh, bring up uh, Parallels here. Parallels Desktop. And I'm going to open this up. Okay. You see it's going to read the radio again. This is actually using uh, the FTDI dongle here between um, uh, my uh, computer and uh, the radio. I really suggest getting one of the FTDI based serial ports. Those work a whole heck of a lot better, but I'm just passing, doing emulation pass through here on Parallels. Uh, it works great for me. Device, radio information, you see the serial number there. You'll also note that the firmware version is a recent version of firmware. You want to use a recent firmware version on this. I, I don't know how to work on version 1 or anything. Um, what's nice about this is the code plug for the tuning data seems to be, you know, everything's in a given area. Uh, it doesn't move around. The, uh, the wireless radios, the Motorola radios, are actually unique in the, the code plug that's downloaded into, into it grows as you add more channels to it. Most radios, they have a you know, fixed size of their code plug, fixed memory for that. So, um, and you'll see your frequency range, 440 to 510. Now keep in mind, if you ever put this to be a... Um, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, uh, a decimal place or something in there. Like if you did 440.025, it would not show up properly. 
uh, it would still show up as 440. It would just not let you program the radio. So that's why you, uh, you notice that. Uh, you, you won't see it in here and you'll be hitting your head against the wall. Um, so that's basically it. You can see all the signaling is in here. And I can go in my one conventional personality I have. You can see I have all my signaling options enabled if I want to so use them. So that's how it's done. Uh, it sure beats uh, firing up, uh, you know, this program here and, uh, you know, reading, uh, uh, going through here and hex editing this and then hex editing upper here. So, uh, you know, if you do look for more of this, I have the web page showing where a lot of this stuff is. Um, and if you are asking, uh, hey, I want to get use of this, uh, I, I want people to use it and give feedback on it right now. Um, it's still very alpha code. It shouldn't brick your radio, but it might. But uh, feel free to hit me up, and uh, I can see what I can do to get you a copy of it. We just got to have feedback. Um, so with that, um, that's all you have to do here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, I will uh, we'll let everybody go. Uh, please, 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 if you do use this, uh, hit me up and make certain we get feedback. That's the one thing I can't stress enough. So uh, I will uh, hopefully update this a little bit later with uh, some newer code and maybe we'll, we'll actually have this be part of Chirp and be able to program the radio completely. Uh, I don't know, but uh, it, it would, uh, for what it does now, it works, works very, very well. Anyways, um, thanks for uh, watching this. This is uh, Brian Fields, uh, amateur radio call sign, W9CR.